Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm super excited because we're finally doing my 2024 bullet journal setup. This is one of my most anticipated videos that I do every year. For myself, I just really enjoy setting up my new bullet journal. As per usual, I'm using an Archer and Olive bullet journal with 192 dotted pages. The links to everything that I'm using in today's video will be down below. As you can see, I also used an Archer and Olive bullet journal last year. So yeah, let's get right into it. But before that, let's hear a word from today's sponsors, Skillshare. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes ready to take you to the next step in your creative journey. It's the perfect place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare has everything you need to make 2024 the year your side hustle comes to life. Skillshare has the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide spectrum of topics ranging from illustration, graphic design, photography to music, marketing and productivity. If you find that you need more time to get through a class, that is also no problem. Skillshare is an on-demand platform with stackable lessons so members can learn at their own pace, no matter the skill level. They have thousands of engaging classes taught by world-class creatives who have launched their own lucrative side incomes. Skillshare has everything you need to go from passion to paycheck or seed your side hustle. Whether you want to build a subscriber base for your email newsletter, use AI tools to create your productivity or open your first Etsy shop, Skillshare can help you get there. I've been a huge fan of Skillshare for years now and have used it throughout my creative journey. I used it in university when learning new software or materials and techniques and I'm now super excited to continue watching Build Your Dream Business by Isis Brianna and also this one called Building an Etsy Shop That Sells by Parker Guard. Want to take your passion onto the next profitable level? Skillshare is giving a one month free trial to the first 500 people who use my link in the description or on screen right now. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Unlock your creativity today and try out Skillshare for yourself. Again, that's one free month to the first 500 people that use the link in my description. Now let's get back into the video. So there is no better feeling than that fresh new bullet journal smell or fresh new notebook smell. Everyone knows it is the most refreshing experience to open up a fresh new notebook, which is one of the reasons why I love doing these videos because it's just the most satisfying thing to completely organize a new year ahead. It almost feels like you're starting anew, you're starting fresh, and it's just a really nice time setting up a bullet journal for me. So I always love filming it and showing you guys my process. Obviously, the first task is to write down my name in my first page. I love that the Archer and Olive notebooks have this cute little front page saying this book belongs to, and I always love going really extra, writing my name out. You can also watch my bullet journal setup videos from the last few years actually and it's really fun to look back and see what things I've changed, what things no longer work for me but used to work for me in the past so all of them are quite different and you can go back and watch all of them if you'd like. So the next page is usually where I'll do my key for this bullet journal. It's where I'll log, you know, the, what symbols mean what throughout this bullet journal and also a little quote to start off my bullet journal. So I'll just write out my key. This usually has stayed the same throughout the years with some slight little variations, but my main sort of key for my bullet journals is I'll do a circle, an empty circle for a task, and then I'll fill in that circle once I've completed that task. I'll do a little star sort of sparkle for an event, a circle with an arrow pointing for travel, a little asterisk for a priority event, a birthday cake for any birthdays, and then a little five-pointed star for a deadline. I like everything to be really aesthetic and satisfying in my bullet journal, so if I can make my keys <laughs> as satisfying as well, I will. And the theme that I went with for this year's setup is squiggly colorful lines. If you saw last year, I went for, you know, like sort of a squiggly lavender theme, but it was like the sort of swirls that I use mainly for my branding and my online shop and stuff right now. But I wanted to do something really colorful, really bold and just really fun for this year's and just really be unafraid of using color. So I'm using a selection of colors from my Arctic's 
acrylic markers and just kind of using it using the pen tilted to get the most surface area of the pen and make really thick these really thick lines and just kind of doing really fun squiggles and being really free with it because I just want my bullet journal to be a safe, inviting place for me where I can plan out my stressful things in life and not feel so overwhelmed. And that's usually my plan going into bullet journaling is to make the hard parts of life as enjoyable as possible when I'm having to plan things out. Obviously bullet journaling is different for everyone and it is made to be different for everyone. That's the beauty of bullet journaling is that it can, you can adapt it to however you want to use it in your own life. These videos are literally just ideas. It's just a, a way for me to show you ideas of how you can be using your bullet journal, but there's a million different bullet journal creators on YouTube and Instagram and Pinterest as well. There's loads of inspiration out there. If you're someone who's wanting to start bullet journaling this year, this video is a great way to sort of see where to start. But if it doesn't match your sort of aesthetic or the way that you think you'd be able to maintain a bullet journal, there's a million ways that you can bullet journal to fit your lifestyle. So for the quote that I did on the other page, I just did a simple little, you know, inspirational quote. Everything blooms in its own time because I really think that speaks to how I'm feeling right now in my mental health and also in my life and in my journey. I just thought that that quote was really beautiful to start the year off with. It's like a low pressure, just take the pressure off of yourself. I thought it was a nice quote for the year. And then on the next few pages, I usually do my grid spacing guide and also my 2024 goals. My grid spacing guide has stayed the same every single year. And it's basically a page where you can reference later on in one of your bullet journaling. It's just an easy cheat sheet basically that you can go back and reference for how to split up your pages into quarters or thirds and then where the middle points are and how many grid squares make up each division and it's just a really easy way when you're you know later on in your bullet journaling wanting to do a weekly spread and you don't know you want to split up your page in quarters and you don't know how you just refer back to this page and it's like just a really easy thing. I actually saw this first on Amanda Rach Lee's YouTube channel. She did this for one of her bullet journal setups a few years back and it was you know mind-blowing. I started using it in my bullet journal and it is quite a lifesaver. So it's something that is a must-have in my bullet journal setups from now on. And then on the page next to it, I decided to do my 2024 goals. I call them goals, but it's mostly just reminders and, you know, things that I want to try and experiment with or try out this year. I've tried to put less pressure on, you know, New Year's resolutions and New Year's goals because I feel like it only welcomes disappointment at the end of the year. You know, it, it, invi it invites disappointment if you even miss one of your goals or one of your resolutions. So I decided to call them goals, but they're mostly suggestions and things for me to aim for this year. But if I don't, that's also fine. As you can tell, my mood for 2024 is to take it easy on myself and be really kind with myself and, you know, trying to be really laid back a little bit because this, the second half of 2023 was really, really hard on me, especially mentally. So we're going into 2024 with a really positive mindset, a really self-caring mindset and being as nice to ourselves as possible while trying to, you know, still run your own business, <laughs> your, your own small business and, you know, working your butts off like I always do. So we're trying to reach a nice, healthy middle of the two. And that's what these two pages ended up looking like. Super cute. I really love this sort of scallop edged theme that I'm using here and I'm going to use it a lot more in the next few pages. As you can see here, I'm doing my year at a glance double spread and it's where I'll put my entire calendar for the year. 
Speaking of calendars, I actually made a calendar and you can purchase that in January when my shop reopens. So make sure to keep an eye out for that because my shop is currently closed, but my shop's opening back up and I still have a lot of calendars left on there. So you'll be able to buy a 2024 calendar made by me. So yeah, here I've just got all the months laid out and I like to do them in sort of a rainbow order. It just makes it look super aesthetic to look at, super satisfying. And it just, you know, makes it really fun to look at the year and makes it a lot less daunting to look at the next 12 months. And for the tedious part, I went in with one of my gel pens and wrote out every single day of the month for every single month of the year. And I spared you the boring details of watching me write out numbers for an eternity and just cut it to when it was already done. <laughs> but yeah, this part is takes a while. It's very meditative, weirdly, but it does take a while, especially if you're handwriting it all by yourself like me. And then I just used the same color I used for my little scallop border here to just separate the middle line of the pages, just to separate the top six months from the bottom six months. And then I use a dark purple pen to obviously add in some sparkles. Guys, are we surprised that I'm using sparkles in every single spread? Come on. <laughs> it's almost like you don't know me. Obviously, there's going to be sparkles everywhere. It is my favorite thing to add to anything. Drawing, bullet journaling, whatever. There's going to be sparkles. <laughs> so I just added some sparkles here and there, and it was basically it for my year at a glance. The next two spreads are my sort of media and you know things that i want to read and watch for this year so i'll split up this double spread into a few different quadrants so i have a square for movies a square for books one for series and then i'll do what a tiny one for comics and one for manga and this is where I'll do my list of, you know, movies that I want to watch this year, books that I want to get through this year, any shows that I've been meaning to want to, to binge watch or to get into. And it's where I'll basically list them and tick them off once I watch them. And I went back to the colorful squiggles background for this so that it matches some of my other spreads in my setup and just did a very pretty sort of squiggly background behind the little squares that I did. And then I actually went in and double bordered all of these squares just to add that extra little detail to them. And that was it for my double spread here for the media stuff. For my next spread, it's actually gonna be my YouTube and shop planners. And the way that I'm splitting them both up is I'm using a Dutch door. And what a Dutch door is, it's basically cutting a page in between two different spreads and cutting it down the middle to make it half a page. And that basically just adds extra space in a spread where you need extra space, but you don't want to split it into four pages, if that makes any sense. And then I basically went in with that same pen in lavender and made that scalloped edge on all the edges of these pages and matched it also over there on the Dutch door. I also cut the Dutch door into a scallop edge to match the theme that I've been using on these other pages. So it looks really, really cute when you flip it over. It just looks really cute. <laughs> Thank you. 
So on this side of the spread, I am using it as my YouTube planner. And this is usually where, where I'll write any like YouTube ideas and video ideas that I still haven't gotten around to making and any YouTube series. And I basically all the stuff that you'll end up seeing on my YouTube, I plan it here. <laughs> and I divided the page down the middle using some little dots as well just so I could have two columns and then on the Dutch door I wrote out tutorials and series into two different quadrants on the, on the right hand side and use the left hand side as you see later as my list for my series my classical painting series that I do here on the channel and that's where I have my list of paintings that I want to get to <laughs> that I still haven't because <laughs> I get a lot of requests and recommendations for that series and this is where I'll write them all down basically you can see me writing the title for that now And again, all the materials that I'm using and supplies will be linked down there in the description box so you can see exactly what I have been using. And over here on the right hand side of our Dutch door is my, sh uh, oh sorry, is my Patreon planner. I said it was going to be my shop planner, but it's actually not. It's my Patreon planner. So I just basically wrote out the title on the top there using a nice cute bubble calligraphy. And then I'm going to again split the page up into different quadrants and squares where I'll be able to plan out different video ideas, tutorials, promotions, and just extra miscellaneous content for my Patreon in 2024 because I've decided that next year I'm actually removing the melon mail tier or at least the melon mail uh, benefit from my Patreon where people used to get exclusive prints and stickers and I might just stick to either a sticker or none at all just because it was uh, giving me a lot more hassle than it was worth unfortunately and was taking a lot of time out of uh, my other projects and endeavors. So I'm going to be focusing a lot more on content and exclusive content over on my Patreon, which is why this page is very important now. So then on the next page, finally, we have my shop planner, my online shop where I sell my art and stuff like that, in case you didn't know. And I just drew out the title like I did for my Patreon planner page and split it up into similar quadrants. So this one has a lot more because I sell all kinds of stuff on my shop. And this is just where I'll write, you know, ideas for things that I want to either start making or start selling on my shop that year. So I've got stickers, books, miscellaneous, charms, pins, apparel, and prints, all those kinds of things. Yes, you heard me, I said apparel, <laughs> so keep your eyes peeled. 2024 is gonna be very interesting. So I did that for my shop planner and then just started drawing out all these squiggly lines in the background with my Arteza acrylic markers. And I carried on those squiggles over onto the next page because my next page is sort of intertwined with my shop planner because it is my tarot deck planner. And so I just carried on the squiggles and sort of made it a double spread situation and made it all look really connected. So as I said, over here on the right, we have my tarot deck planner and I've been actually working on a tarot deck, in case you didn't know, for almost two years now because it's been a very, very side, side, side project. I'm actually getting to the end now with it, which is really exciting because it means that I'll be able to launch my Kickstarter for it at some point this year and I'm very excited for you all to see it. But yeah. No spoilers yet on this side of the page. We're going to skip onto the next double spread. <laughs> and the next double spread is something new that I haven't actually done in any of my other setups. So I'm, as you can see here, I'm cutting out another Dutch door because I'm doing a double spread with a Dutch door of all of my habits trackers for the entire year in one spot. So if you've been watching my bullet journal videos for the past few years, you will have noticed that for every monthly spread, I will add a page where I'll do my monthly habits trackers for that month, every single month. But I actually wanted to have a place where I could have 
my habits trackers all in one place and then just fill out my habits for every month again all in one spot and it'll save me a lot of time every month as well because it's one less thing i need to write out is all like the little trackers for every habit every month so i basically created this chart and so every column is a different month so that's why it's an even at the bottom because every month has a different number of days and then every one of these charts is a different habit that i'm tracking and each habit will have different colors some of the habits will have even different gradients of colors depending on which which habit I actually did that day for the month. So for example, my workout habit tracker, uh, there's different kinds of workouts that I would like to track for that. So a different color will mean a workout, yoga, walking, or just some stretching, and the same for some of the other ones. And as you can see here, I managed to fit six habits trackers on a double spread with a Dutch door. And I'm very excited to see how this works for me, if it's more easy, if it's, you know, a lot more confusing and I forget to use it. So we'll see. But I'm very excited to have all of my habits in one spot. So for the next double spread, we have the final two setups for the year. So we have my bills and subscriptions and my monthly gratitude log. So my bills and subscriptions is kind of exactly what it says on the tin. It's basically where I track all of my monthly and yearly bills and subscriptions. So I separate them by month and then by year so that then when I do my expenses at the end of the year, I know exactly how much I spent monthly, how much I spent yearly on, you know, work expenses and personal bills as well. And then I basically have a, uh, a base number that I can put into my expenses trackers on every monthly spread. I have an exact number that I can just put down for my bills and subscriptions and I don't have to write all of them out. It just makes life a lot easier and it makes me feel really organized with my money because I can see exactly how much money is going to come out of my account every single month and then every single year. So of course I then drew out my little table over there on the right so 12 rows for one, one for each month of the year. And that's going to be my monthly gratitude. I like to do, you know, I try to practice gratitude very regularly anyways, but I like to do it monthly and try to make up 12 different things that I was grateful for every single month of the year. So I try to not repeat them every month. And it's just really fun to see what things I was the most grateful for every single month along the year and see how they differ. It's a very good exercise to implement for your mental health, I think. And if you're someone that struggles to uh, do it regularly, this is a really great way to start it by just doing it once a month. And then you can kind of implement it more regularly. So then of course I just added some sparkles around the title and any empty spots on the page and that was it for these two spreads and now we're heading into my January spreads. But of course I had one page left here on the left so I just wanted to fill it in with the year 2024 and just do like a nice little finishing page that separates my yearly organizational spreads from the first month basically and so i just did a very simple title page here with the year number and just decorated it of course with a bunch of colorful squiggly lines in the background it is just such a simple design but makes it look so fun and colorful and like you put so much effort into it and it just makes your spreads really fun to look at and exciting to use so that's why i wanted to do this sort of design for my setups because it just made things really lively and exciting and it's really easy to do so <laughs>
So once that was done, we're now getting into my January monthly setup, which I like to include in my 2024 bullet journal setups, because then you can see sort of how I'm going to go in and do my monthly setups from here on out. So I'm actually carrying on that scalloped lavender theme <laughs> on into my first month of the year. So January is going to have this very purpley, very scalloped theme, very, you know, cutesy. Over the past few years, every single year, my January month is purple or lavender themed. So I feel like I have to keep up the <laughs> this tradition. I love lavender. It is probably one of my favorite colors, if you didn't know. And obviously, I like to start off the year strong with my favorite color. So that's why. So I just drew out the name of the month, January, added, you know, some little adornments to it, like a gradient and a little drop shadow, and also added the calendar, very tiny there underneath it, just to fill up that part of the page. And then, of course, added a bunch of sparkles with this dark purple pen, as well as just a bigger sparkle down there at the bottom, because I realized that there was a big empty space down there. So I just filled it in with like a big ass sparkle. <laughs> And once that was done, we can now head into my monthly spread for January. I went in with my fine liner and drew out the calendar for this month. I usually always start off with this just so I can get the calendar down and then fill in the remaining space with the designs and, you know, and decor. So I always start off with drawing out the calendar and then decorating the page. As you can see, I'm doing this scalloped sort of border around the entire double page look makes it look so adorable so so cute really gives me like a sario vibe as well which i love so it is making my heart sing and then i went in and wrote out january again in the same sort of bubble calligraphy font like on our title page and again, added a little bit of gradient just with like cross hatching just at the bottom there and made it all look really fancy and cute and adorable, almost like a tea party. It gives me tea party vibes. That's the vibe I'm getting from this theme. And then I used one of my purple sort of pinkish highlighters from Starulo to just do a little background here where I wrote out the days of the week on top of the calendar. And then I went into the titles over there on the right hand side of the double spread. And this is where I'll write my to do list for this month or things happening this month. I just kind of write this month um, and then write, you know, things of note that are happening that month in this quadrant. And then I also write in a little segment for YouTube and Patreon. And again, this is just where I will organize what things need to be made, what content needs to be made for this month for YouTube and Patreon. And it just keeps me on track with those two big social media platforms. Then I ran in and wrote out all the days of the month on the calendar. Again, very tedious work, but interestingly meditative. And then of course I just added a little circle with the same lavender pen I used earlier for, you know, just to make the numbers of the calendar pop out a little bit. Next up, we have my trackers for the month. And since we're not doing habits trackers anymore every month, as you saw, I'm now putting in my mood tracker on this page instead of on my monthly spread page. Usually I will have put like found a little spot on my monthly spread to put in my mood tracker, but now I don't have to like sort of shove it into that page. I can just give it its own spot here and it's next to all my other trackers as well. So it all works out lovely. So I did a little square over there on the left, wrote out all the days of the month down in a column, and then it's going to be sort of like a bar graph <laughs> over the month where each day I'll just sort of put on the graph where how I was feeling that month. 
And then next to it, I did another chart over here. And this is going to be my personal expenses. So expenses in my personal life and where I will log, you know, my bills and subscriptions and things that I spend on myself, because then the page next to it is all business expenses. And this is a very important page to me as a business owner and a sole trader. Obviously, I have to stay on top of all of my expenses and make sure that everything is very well documented because uh, then when it comes to doing my taxes every year it just makes my life so much easier and yeah that's why I like to be super organized with these things it just makes future Piper have to worry a lot less <laughs> So I wrote out the title and then drew out all of these little squares where I'm going to basically write out different expenses. So I'll usually have a square for my revenue, my income coming in, and then I have one for printing, one for shipping costs and any money that I use on shipping, and then one for packaging, money that I spend on packaging, and then just one for general work expenses. So this way I can sort of as well differentiate my work expenses and my business expenses into different categories and see where I'm spending the most, where I'm spending less. And it just helps me sort of categorize it as well every month. So that's it for my trackers double spread looking very cute. And then my next double spread is very simple because I like to have it quite empty and open. It is my brain dump page. This is just a page that I like to keep wide open and empty because it's where I'll, you know, jot down notes and ideas and make lists of things that need to be done and plan pretty much everything that doesn't have a specific spot for it. So yeah, I use these brain dump pages a lot every month and just help, they help me organize my life even further. So I just do a cute little border with the same scalloped lavender edge and then just wrote out the title brain dump over there at the top with, of course, some cute little sparkles to make it look cute. And that is pretty much it for my brain dump page with lots of space for me to use it to my leisure. And finally, with that double spread done, we can head on to the last spread of this video. It's been a long one, I know you guys, but thank you for sticking around if you have. This is my first weekly spread of the year of 2024. So I, of course, kept it in with a theme, did a little scalloped edge and did a double spread just to kind of show you guys how I usually do my double spreads for my weeklies. Sometimes if I know I'm going to have like a very chill week, I'll do it on a single page. But most weeks I'll try to use a double page because then I, I know I have lots of room to write out, you know, my tasks, my events and things like that. So I separate the page into seven different squares for the days of the week, making the weekend days a little smaller because obviously I don't work on the weekends or I shouldn't work on the weekends. So there's less things to write in those two squares. And then I wrote out the month of January on the top left corner of the first page. And my general to do list for the week is always on the bottom right corner of my spreads. And that's just for me to write, you know, things that I need to do this week, but I don't exactly know when I'm going to be doing them. And it's just a good way to organize things that need to be done, but I haven't organized them into a specific day yet. Then, of course, I, I just write in the days of the month the days of the week into each square and just do them in this cute little calligraphy again using my zebra mod liners in different shades of purple and pink to match the theme and then i like to draw a little line just on the top third of each square so that I can separate my events from my tasks. And then over there on the top left quadrant, I'm just going to draw a mini calendar of the month so that I can highlight 
which day of the month this weekly spread is for. And that was it for my entire bullet journal setup for 2024, you guys. Here is my flip through of all the spreads we did in this video. We did quite a lot of spreads. I hope you took some inspiration and hopefully I even inspired you to try your hand at bullet journaling this year. Honestly, I started bullet journaling about six or seven years ago and it has completely changed my life. I am super, super organized. It really reduces my day-to-day -day anxiety and it makes running a business and being self-employed just so much easier. So if you're thinking of starting a bullet journal, let me know down there in the comments. And if you're going to use any of the spreads that I did in this video for your first bullet journal, Again, all the supplies that I used and even the exact bullet journal that I have are going to be in the description box below so you can have a look for yourself. And yeah, I really hope that you enjoy this video. <laughs> Let me know which spread was your favorite, if there's one in particular that really caught your eye. I hope everyone has an incredible year in 2024. I really hope you take care of yourselves above everything and be really kind to yourselves because above all, you can't pour out of an empty cup. So that's the energy I'm taking into 2024 and I hope you do too. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and thank you for all the love that you gave me this year. I really, really appreciate it. Have a lovely rest of 2023 and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.